In this video, I want to talk about one of the biggest mistakes that I see homeowners make when they decorate their homes, how to fix it and how to avoid it in the future. And I truly believe that once you've addressed this mistake, you will really up your decorating game and you'll be well on your way to creating a beautifully layered, nuanced home that you love. Are you ready for this? I believe that the biggest decorating mistake homeowners make is matching colors in their space a little bit too closely. So what do I mean by that? I certainly don't mean that you should go out and use all the colors of the rainbow in your home. What I mean is that once you've established your color palette, you should then make a conscious effort to pick different shades, tints, and tones of that color for different elements in your space. And this holds both for neutral spaces and spaces that use actual color. So let me show you a couple of examples because it's really best to illustrate it with actual spaces. So this is my living room. Um, it's a decidedly neutral room. It uses a variety of neutral tones. And at first glance, you may think, well, it's just a neutral room that uses taupes and beiges. But when you look at individual pieces of furniture and decor, you realize that I made a very conscious effort to introduce a wide variety of different shades, tones, and tints. So our walls are an off-white. Then we move into the cream of the sofa, which has decidedly yellow undertones. But when you look at the chairs across from the sofa, they're very different neutral, aren't they? They're a mid-tone taupe that has more red undertones than, than yellow undertones of the sofa. And then when you look at the rug, the rug is a sizal rug that is honey colored then that's paired with darker honey colored floors and then we are going into much deeper shades of brown and and gold in the frame of the um, picture on the mantle so just looking at those few elements you realize that i did not go with a singular color of let's say cream in my chair sofa and rug um, or just taupe. I made a very conscious effort to really vary them quite significantly. This really contributes to that sense of a space feeling nuanced and layered and not too matchy-matchy, which will inevitably make a room feel flat. Now, I do realize that this goes a little bit against conventional wisdom because I often hear from clients that um, they feel that we should be picking up colors from um, one element and directly uh, translating them into another. So if we have you know, certain blues in a piece of art, we should be taking that blue and using it in our pillows or our drapes. And um, the opposite is actually true. We don't want to be repeating the exact same shade of a given hue. We want to be skewing it a little bit, okay? So if you're again using blues, you may want to use some blues that are a little bit lighter, others that are a little bit darker. Some that maybe skew a little more towards teal. Um, I love looking at the color wheel and looking at the color that's adjacent to my um, core colors. So for example, again, with the in the case of a blue, I might go a little bit towards uh, green. If I'm using red, I may skew a little bit towards pink or orange. I promise you, these will not clash. What they will do is they will introduce that much, much needed level of nuance and depth uh, that you want in your space. Let me show an example of a room that I designed um, for clients um, a couple of years ago. Again, it's a mostly neutral room, but I do have hits of blue that I'm using here. Um, you see the beautiful navy blue chairs. And then I also have some blue in the piece of art over the sofa. But if you look closely, you realize that the blue in the chairs is quite different from the blues in the art. Uh, my blues are more grayed out and then the bottom one has um, much more teal in it. Quite different from the navy blue velvet of the chairs, isn't it? So that was again a conscious effort to make sure that the fabric of the chairs does not pick up directly on the blue in the art. 
Now, what I did here is I mocked up um, what blue pillows would look like if they were um, picking up directly from the um, chairs. And I think you will agree that suddenly this makes this space feel much more flat and we're really removing that beautiful nuance and depth that we previously had. And now here's another example of a client project where I used varying shades of camel and caramel to give this room uh, depth. If you look at the chairs, this color is a little bit different from the color of the drapes, right? The drapes are a little bit lighter, they have a little more red in them, and then the gold of the pillows is again different from the previous two colors. Then I'm building on this nuance palette with the color of the artwork, right? We're looking at sort of grayed out taupe um, for these architectural uh, drawings. And then when you move to the coffee table, the objects and books I use for styling are also employing um, different shades and tones and tints of that um, brown honey camel palette. You're looking at the books at the top, they're much lighter, um, beiges and taupes. And then we're going into the ball on the um, stand that is a much darker color. All of these different shades, tints and tones all contrib contribute to that sense of nuance and depth and a beautifully layered look that you always find in spaces designed by uh, professional designers. Um, if you start to analyze those spaces when you see them again uh, for that level of depth and color, I think you will start to notice that that is almost always the case. So why are we so attracted to spaces that utilize that nuanced, varied color palette? I believe that as humans, we're actually hardwired to have an appreciation for that level of nuance because that's what we encounter in nature. And we are part of the natural world. If you were to look at any landscape, I think you would, would be hard pressed to find one that consists of only one shade of green or brown. Look at any landscape and you realize that there is a wide variety of, of greens. There is darker greens and lighter greens. There is greens that feel more emerald and those are, that are more olive greens. Same with browns. We have light browns and dark browns. Those are more saturated. Those are, them are more muted. Every landscape consists of a wide gamut of shade. And I believe that that's why we appreciate that same level of nuance in our interiors. If you like this tip, I encourage you to check out my magazine Worthy Spaces Essentials Masterclass that I'm offering to you right now for 50% off the regular price. That's where I share all my best designer tips, tricks, and techniques that have allowed me to create countless magazine worthy spaces for my clients. Again, I'm offering it to you right now for 50% off for a limited time. So do check it out. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to get some really actionable, concrete uh, knowledge and skills that will allow you to start to create a home of your dreams.